Right guys, welcome back to Coaching Conversations with Pete and Yas. But before we get to today's episode, just a quick announcement from our partnership with St. Mary's University Twickenham. Yeah, so thanks for having me. Um, I'm Ashley, our performance football coaching course lead, uh, as you know, as a member of our alumni. Um, our course is unique around the world, so we believe that we have a, a, a distance learning model that kind of works for everyone, regardless of where they are in the world. They can study football performance coaching from their environment and put it into their context. Amazing. And who is it for? So we really have lots of different unique opportunities. So you can be a pro license coach that we've had in the past. You could be a level two UEFA B coach. It's about putting it into your context. So we'll expose students to match analysis, uh, contemporary football coaching cultures, and they can put that into their own practice and improve their knowledge and understanding of the game. Thank you for that, Ash. And as an alumni member of St. Mary's University Twick, and I'm proud to announce the partnership that we've got going on, where each week myself and Pete will be delivering conversations around different how-to elements and analysis tips and obviously some insights from our own experiences as coaches and coach developers. So catch that on YouTube and every week on all major platforms where you can hear it in audio form as well. Right guys, welcome back to Coaching Conversation with Pete and Yas. My name's Yas. My name's Pete. Right guys, welcome back to Coaching Conversation with Pete and Yas. My name's Yas. My name's Pete. <laughs> and we're here today for uh, our new show and a new segment on our show called What's Your Strategy? Where basically each week myself and Pete will be looking at some different ways of playing. Um, and today's theme is going to be looking at playing out from the back where Pete will be explaining us and showing us his strategy in possession. And I'll be looking to counter it out of possession. Never happening. Pete, straight over to the board then. Right, Pete, we're at the table. What's your strategy? Today's theme is going to be looking at playing out from the back. Talk to us. Okay, so... Obviously, we've got this set up here at the moment. So we, let's, let's put it so it's like this. So they've decided they're going to press us high. So you, 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 you're, you're going to press me high. All right? Because everything is, is, is contextual, isn't it? So, so I've got my two centre-backs in here. got my full-backs and my wide players here. You've decided that you're going to press us really, really high. It's going to get up to the halfway line. So it's quite congested in here. Okay? okay, and you've left the space in behind. Now, a couple of things that I'm thinking about here is, okay, playing out from the back, I'll be talking about playing out from the back from a point of view of, this is very rough by the way, because um, you can move your, your players where you want them to move eventually. I might be thinking, do I draw you in by the goalkeeper making that pass and then you might get that and the, play, the goalkeeper's part of the press we get some movement, we get out of there, so on and so forth. Or, the other thing is that you've pressed us really high, the space is in behind, we're going to go directly in there. Okay? So, because my thought processes on anything are, well, what is the game or what is, what, what's the problem that's been, been set to us? And if we're being pressed like this, and then I have to think about the skill set of my players as well, is, are these players really comfortable to receive the ball in these tight areas, being pressed here to get out here and here and here. Alright? So that's my, 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 my first thing. Now, if I'm playing with a team that are not technically blessed, say for example, they're not great passers or whatever it is, am I really gonna go and play out like this? I might find that I might struggle. Mm. Okay, because if that ball goes in there, you press, you'll press me, won't you? Okay? Right? But let's take all of that out of the equation and let's just say my players are really good at playing out from the back, right? And mm. this is what I'm going to do, right? So, it's really tight. So this is what we're going to do. My first thought is this. And then you're going to have to, what's that? Is we're going to get out. So we're right up to here. That's what we're going to do. What are you going to do if I do that? Well, per personally speaking, I'm quite comfortable with not having to press at the top, but typically what I would look to do, knowing that this is a structure, you're probably going to go long anyway. So I think it's recognising that in the first instance, but I would also probably have a slightly different shape here. Mm -hmm. right? I'm not a big fan of my centre forward pressing anyway, and typically I'll go for either a kind of a 3-5-2 or a 4-3-3 three, three kind of setup. So let me just shift it to that slightly there. Mm -hmm. Now for me, it would be very tight in the middle, right? Come four three three, and I'd typically have these guys highest. But in this situation here, I'm probably just asking everyone to drop off now. Yeah, 
if, I'm, if we're looking at the situation as far as I'm concerned I'm probably going to miss up as well to be fair um, you haven't got many options in this space so it's probably going to have to go long okay right so three things are, yeah that's, it, that's, that's how I would respond in, in the first instance yeah okay alright so this is what I'm going to do now once that's happened I'm going to do this these two players here they're going to cross over right and as they cross over what do you think you're going to do if they, if they do that well, what I would expect for my team to do in particular, I don't think anything will change. It's just be communication amongst them to decide you know, where they're going to maybe pass players on potentially. But mm -hmm. more specifically, that, that's probably the only thing I would change at that point in time, to be fair. Okay. All right, cool. So why now I'm going to do this. Okay. So, I mean, that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I would then push these players out here mm -hmm. and here. Because the first thing I actually, I actually, I actually would like you to make that pass. Okay. Okay, great. But I'm not going to make that pass. He's going to get it. Half turn. What are you going to do now? I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. I'll just then ask this player to retreat in there. And this one to retreat in there. Okay. He's going in there. <laughs> that's that's fine. But I mean, like I said, in in, in that instance, if you if we're speaking speaking about this area of the pitch in particular, that's fine. However, in here. As soon as that ball goes into that space there, the, the rest of the team shape will probably, will probably shift around that as well. So it'll probably look something like that for me. Okay. Right. And then I'll be, I'll be, I'll be asking my goalkeeper because I mean, I'm typically with the goalkeeper anyway. I'm, I'm, I like it to be on the front foot, ready for that, ready for that type of pass. But, but I've gone. So he's come in. You've sent these. Two, remember what you've done. You've yeah, done that. Fine. So if right. they start, if they go back to where right, they that's were. That's what you've done. Yeah, that's fine. Right. So if they okay. go back to where they were. The moment I realise that ball's been released, their first part is to do that, but actually these will, will all adjust with that. Okay. So by the time the player's on it, half yeah. turn or not, okay. we, we're, we're in a much more compact But shape. look at that space. I've stuck it in there. The but, I'm, but I'm comfortable though, because you know, once... To, one to, one to He's quick. It, he might be quick, but then if a goalkeeper, if I'm speaking to my players in particular on this occasion, and that player is quick, I'm going to ask my goalkeeper to make it have any a more aggressive start one that might actually tempt that pass to happen. Yeah, okay. He's in. Okay. <laughs> he's in. But he's, he's in, in. Now, he's Right, in. he's in. And you there, that's going over the top of me. You're scoring. I'm nah. scoring. I'm, sc I'm backing him. He's going to score from there. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, one, one thing to say, we don't, we don't know who this individual is, right? He's quick. He might be quick. <laughs> he might be quick. But the first thing, I've, again, you know, if we're looking at going back to the start where you're looking to play out from, right? Yeah. If I know that, then you know these are these are obviously key funding. But you don't know it. But now I now I do because you've told me it's quick. <laughs> <laughs> so at which point I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this to you now. Go I've already got you. I've already got you. I I don't agree. <laughs> I, don't, I personally don't agree. I tell you why I've already go got on. you. I tell you why I've already got you. Go for it. Because once you move those players to go in here, right, <clears throat> and this player makes because this this is the thing. Because I'm clearing this space because I want to get this player on the ball. Mm. So I might want to get this player and this player on the ball. Now, if you stay there, you've played right into my hands. Yeah. Especially if, because the thing about it is, is if they don't drop off straight away, right? Which you, you might say you might, you, you might do. Yeah, sure. Right? Now, if that ball gets played in here, I've got another move. I'm going to just drop one in there. Yeah. I mean... Just, just to be clear with these two here, I think mm. it's, it's less about them going towards these players and mm. if you like more about them making sure the ball doesn't find its pass into your fullbacks. So mm. obviously in this case, you know, these guys will mm. have dropped in. So that's why they're just to make sure that the ball doesn't go out wide. I want the ball to come centrally because that's where we're set up to defend mm. essentially. Now, you're right, you know, obviously if I recognise that he's got time and space on the ball, then mm. that, that might encourage me and the, and the rest of my team to, to drop off slightly. Mm. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, what we're looking to do in the first instance is I'd be looking to set a trap so that I'm encouraging that ball there. Now, if I get that ball there, then I can then I can I can then respond to that appropriately. But first things first is if I'm coaching this, I want my team to play the way that we want to play rather than be dictated by you, if that mm. makes sense. But if we take into account that you're saying that this guy is quick on the ball or whatnot, if that is the read of the situation. I've got no problems with this player spending more time on the ball. So actually dropping off and allowing that time, person time and space mm. on it to then decide whether they do want to try and do that. Mm. But depending on what level you're playing at, depending on what um, system 
the opposition might be playing and depending on what experience the coaches might have, it's possible that, especially at a lower level, that ball is less likely to take place and they're probably more likely to try and play by dribbling it out from that space there into the, into a congested space, in my opinion. In your opinion? Yeah, yeah 100%. But, I'm going back to context. Okay. <laughs> the context is this. That's the context. Yeah. Right? My, my thing is this. It's, we've made the, I've made the pitch deliberately congested in there, right, to free up that space. And the reason why I, I say this is because I, I've, I've done, actually done this before. And what happens is in, this, in, the, in, these, in these situations, and, it, and, and again, it's it dependent on the players as well. Mm. The players were a massive part of this when I did this, was that they have to be brave enough to come and get the ball here and the keeper's got to play it. What normally happens is what you say, these players follow, will follow, now, this player's job is really, and this, would, this would be, wouldn't be a fullback, this would be a midfield player would come in here. As they come in here, it's this midfield player that I want to get on the ball because he's my best ball player, right? And he's looking at that diag or this one in here, mm -hmm. right? Now, what would normally happen is the teams, once they see that, they start to pull out into here, right? Now, once those spaces start to occur, because that's what we're looking to try and create, we might get that and that, or that. Well, but the one we really wanted was always that one. Yeah. We all, and we always got out by doing that. Yeah. Because they didn't know what, you know. Yes, and then the next thing would be, they would drop. Right? Because they don't want that ball played in, yeah. okay? So then, we stay on the ball. We stay on the ball and we start to keep it. Yeah. Right? Now what happens is, is that somebody breaks ranks. It might be this player breaks ranks. We play around that player, okay? Then we start to push players in here. They push on, they push on. Now we start to look at getting balls in to slide down the side. And we're looking at movements, maybe from midfield players coming late to play that one in there. So it's those kind of things that, that, that's, that, that was always my strategy. My yeah. st strategy was always around, um, and this is what we're talking about, what our strategies are, to play out from the back is to find different ways to play out, yeah? Yeah. Now, you know that I'm going to do that, all right? Mm -hmm. So you know I've done that. And you've seen it the first time. And I'd set it up again. What do you do now? In this look, situation? So the situation is you've seen me do it, we've got out, we've nearly scored. Yeah, I don't think anything, I don't think much changes for me other than the fact that, like I said, if I go back to my, my base shit being a 4-3-3, mm -hmm. I want these guys to make sure that first and foremost that they, they've got that compact shape of a, you know, mm -hmm. that back four. They're not, if we had to split the pitch down five lanes, they're never, they're never when they're out of position in particular, they're never mm -hmm. beyond the three lanes mm -hmm. out of the five. So that would be, be the first thing I'll be saying to them. Mm -hmm. Now... I've actually got no problems conceding the possession in here. Mm -hmm. For me, I'd be asking my team, right, I don't want your line of engagement to be any higher than, let's mm -hmm. just say, the second the second third. Mm -hmm. So on entry to the final third, for me, the only players that should enter that space, in my opinion, for, for the way that I want my team to play, mm -hmm. would be the two wide players mm -hmm. in, in, as part of the 4-3-3. Three, three. So obviously in this case, that's not, but the, the instruction more specifically for them would be allow centre-backs on the ball, but don't allow the centre-back to find a pass into the full-back. Okay. Right, so whether it is your centre back or not, whether your centre back doesn't get on the ball, their main priority is to make sure that the ball, if it does come out to the, the stop or one of these two players, and, I, and again, for me, this has worked several times where I've allowed the first pass to be made. As long as they can't play into the second pass, which is for the fullback pass, I'm fairly comfortable and happy with what's going to happen in here. Okay because the rest of the team know that their line of engagement is going into the final third on entry to the final third rather than rather on entry from the defending third into the midfield third for the opposition at which point the only two players that need to be outside of now the role and response of for these two is very simple like I said if that centre back gets the ball we don't mind them playing that that's mm. fine we can do that but if this centre back does get the ball the striker's job is to maybe try and direct play by screening the passes on the same side as the centre back Okay, what's that look like? 
So as an example, if this player's got the ball, if you just show me where you might want the rest of your teammates based on this current right, shape. So this is what I, I'd be looking at. I'd be looking at a player there mm-hmm. and a player here. Yeah. Right. Obviously, I'm going to have a centre forward in there. That's a, that's a ten. That's a seven. Four. I might be even four, say for example. Mm-hmm. And then have that. All right. So the idea is, if you are going to allow me this space here, all yeah. right, I'm going to actually play a little box around you. That's fine. So in the first instance, that's what you're going to go for. Then I would actually be saying to my teammates or to my players. Right, we want to get goal side, ball side there, goal side, ball side there. And we operate in a shape like this, which... So I'm actually encouraging you to play back in here. Mm. Because I know if it comes back in here, and I can then keep it directed to one side. Mm. So as an example, one or two things in my opinion will mm. likely happen here. Either you look to play that one in there, mm-hmm. and go across this player and maybe into that space. So that's mm. fine, I'm happy with that. Now. The instruction again to these guys, which is slightly different to the rest of the team, is that Mm. as soon as it passes into that midfield third, Mm. they can now begin pressing from behind as well as from in front. Mm. For now, because it's gone past that fullback, then uh, until it goes past that fullback, their job is to make sure it can't go into it. Mm. So if the fullback starts to do that, they'll just do that. Mm. Which in in you know, by its pure nature, I hope will probably indicate to this player there's less space to play into, Mm. which means they're more likely to do that now. At which point. They just stay in that channel. They mm. sort of, I always talk about having multiple roles in my mm. position. One is to mark the player, mm. and or two is to screen the pass. Mm. Okay, so I could be doing both at the same time without having to necessarily be goal side of them. Mm. So it's just encouraging. So the line of approach we talk about having half lines with out of position in particular. So if this player approaches here, mm. main thing for me is not necessarily in the first instance how close you can get, mm. but in the first instance is making sure that pass isn't on. Mm. Now, where in this case, we've got this player out here. Mm. We've got to be conscious that we're not allowing them to have a free pass either. Mm. So this is where the rest of the team will now shift. Because what we don't want is once the ball goes in there, for it to come back out on this side. So the key thing for me is let this person have it. Eventually, from my experiences, what is likely to happen is these players here will eventually get frustrated if the ball doesn't get forward. So they'll able to look to dribble it out, which is what we're baiting them for, hopefully in terms of setting that trap or they all look to potentially go along in which we can prepare and plan for that appropriately so if we're now anticipating that that's what's likely to happen mm-hmm. we can be prepared to deal with that and those are the two outcomes that I'd be looking to go after in that in that process okay right <laughs> like that <laughs> so as I said to you everything for me is contextual so I'm looking at the picture here mm-hmm. right this is what I'm going to e- want to happen this player's just going to make a little move there Right, mm-hmm. I'm playing it into this player here, and I want them on the half turn in that position there because I'm looking for them to play forward. Right, so if they're playing there, this player comes off there, and now we're in there. Now, again, for me, when I look at the spaces that I've been allowed for my players in this, I remember when I talk about when I often when I talk about the, the, these things, it's not about what I think is going to happen is what's going to happen. Because in this instance here, this player, because this is the, these are the players I want on the ball, because they're my three best ball players, they will have the skills to be able to be on the half turn, to be able to play forward, right? I'm not worried about these guys out here because these are there for deception. I want to play down the middle of you. I want to play down the middle of you. Mm. Because now you've got to defend, right? And now, these things that's going to happen, players become rash, give away free kicks, they grab hold of players, etc., etc., etc. Those are the things I'm looking for, right? And now, I'm also looking at that space in there and that space in there. Mm. Because if I go in here, I'll attract you, which now leaves space for me to go in here, mm. right? That's what I'm looking for. Either side, I'm looking for that. You've got me there. I can't go that side, but I can go that side. Yeah. yeah. And this player's role and these players' role, the movement between these players, and again, we're talking about, you say what my strategy is. My strategies are always about having constant movement of these three here, right? And they will actually have movement with those three, mm. right? So it might be this player might go in there and this player comes in here. So we create other diversions, right? And while this player coming in here, 
and this player go in here, he might attract that player and we just go in there. Mm. Yeah? So we start to look at the different diversions and stuff that we can start to, to create to cause you a problem defensively. Now, this, this, you, know, you could say, well, I could do this, I could do that, I could do that. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course you can. But these are moments. These are tiny little moments. And it's quite often that a player gets attracted by a tiny mo moment or movement which allows somebody to get in. And all of a sudden you see, oh my God, there's a breakaway here because of that reason. Right? And understanding, uh, you know, I talk, I've talked about this in the past about width being for deception. It is. Because we want to, the goal's there. Mm. We want to score in there. Mm. We don't want to score here. Because if the ball does go out here, you've got a real opportunity to get bodies across there and stop me from getting into the middle. Right? But if I actually attack you down the middle, right, what you'll do, you'll come in towards the ball. The mm. players will come in towards the ball. It was, it was that, wasn't it? So it, the, that will attract somebody. Mm. And it might attract this player, right? Now, if that player goes in, okay, great. This player should come up, we play that, we get out there. Yeah? And obviously, things will move. This player might come in here, and that player yeah. might do this, and might do that. But, it's, but by f in the first instance, creating a space here, we start to... St because again, most teams don't see that. They think, right, if you're going to go that high up, you're going to go... You, your first thing you said, you're going to go long. Right? But I'm going, that's what I want you to think. Yeah, I get that. I think for me, you know, I'm just conscious that, you know, time as well, that it comes back to something that we've always talked about. In the game, for me, it's just, it's just a series of patterns. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, I'm going to base on my experiences and what mm -hmm. my experiences are telling me are likely, like, 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 mm -hmm. likely probabilities. Mm -hmm. Right? So as an example of that, if you're, you know, this could be a cat and mouse game, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, fundamentally, if you're trying to get me to do the exact thing I want you to do, mm -hmm. At some point, we're going to be loggerheads, right? Mm -hmm. so it's just recognizing who can, who can who can kind of adapt at first. But I think, mm -hmm. for me, the key message in all of this is, well, we go back to the principles of play, mm -hmm. which you've spoken about before, mm -hmm. and whatever those principles are, mm -hmm. they're consistent. Yes. How we then want those principles to be then? I guess if you like demonstrated, mm -hmm. is what is what dictates how we want our mm -hmm. teams to play. So mm -hmm. in, in your case, you're talking about right penetration. Mm -hmm. Your first thought is using penetration, mm -hmm. uh, you know, is to penetrate your position, but mm -hmm. using width mm -hmm. and the idea of creating space mm -hmm. as a way to disguise That's right. um, or over oversight the fact that you are still trying to penetrate, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm saying, okay, well, actually, <laughs> My thing is in compactness, mm -hmm. so I want, I want I want a height, width, and depth mm -hmm. in my in my line, mm -hmm. right? So I need some distances, I need some clear lines, mm -hmm. clear units. But I, I think the key thing to take away from this is whatever you decide to do, I have a response for it, mm -hmm. and that response should be subjectively changed based on what you're doing, mm -hmm. rather than me telling and saying, actually, you know what, this is how I'm going to play, and this mm -hmm. is how it's always going to work. Mm -hmm. So I think. For me, it's about, you know, I guess leaving coaches with a, with a thought that you might have a way of playing, but what allows it to work mm -hmm. and what stops it from working? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And how much of that have you examined? Because mm -hmm. you might have a way that you want to go and play out from the back. Mm -hmm. You might actually not even want to do that more. Mm -hmm. But what have you seen which has made you think, actually, we need to do that more? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, when might that moment be where you think, mm -hmm. if you objectively look at it and say, well, actually, that's an opportunity to do mm -hmm. that ball? Because you're going back to the principles mm. of playing, what the game's all about. So I mean, yeah, it's interesting, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. But um, but there, there you have it, guys. In another coaching conversation with Pete and Yas. Um, try something slightly different I today. Think I won. Because <laughs> I don't oh, think that let is. Let us know your thoughts. Guy, yeah, you know, let yeah. Us know your thoughts. When, when you put your comments in, say who you think won, <laughs> right? Because I think I won. <laughs> yeah. If you want a part two, let us know. So yeah, coaching conversation with Pete and Yas, guys. My name is Yas. My name's Pete. Leave us a comment. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And we'll be back next week. <laughs>